What's up guys, welcome back, Eli here, and today, as you can see, we're going to be talking about do's and don'ts in art. These are just tips, really, on how I personally think could help someone else. For, so for those of you who want to learn how to draw, I'm going to do my best to teach you what I know. First thing we'll be talking about is how you would want to draw a manga head and a manga face. Here I'll be showing you what not to do. I'm pretty sure you can already tell that that is not how you want to do it. Right here, it really just looks like an oval. That's not how you want it to be. The face is really long. I just don't see how it could be proportionate. I shouldn't have moved the paper. Oops. <laughs> a good thing to do in art is whenever you're drawing, if you're drawing a character of some kind, you're going to want to make sure it's proportionate. For example, I'll draw here just a little box and try to make it even. Remember when drawing, it can never be too precise. Basically meaning, if you're drawing a character of some kind, it's, it helps really to draw lines and don't be afraid to draw too much as you're drawing once you have this basic head shape at the top just gonna curve it in to where this box stops and there's your head since you already have your lines ready, since well I don't, I'm just gonna don't and also don't be afraid to make your lines really thick. Once you have that, I'm just gonna put in that box in the back a line right there. So that's the line right there. This is where I think the nose will start over here, then the mouth. Basically, I'm just marking proportions on where I want stuff, and I'll mark it. Mouth, nose, eyes, all stuff like that. Trust me, this will really help you on where you want to put stuff. Because if you don't mark any lines whatsoever, you're not going to know where you want it to be. That does not look very good. Yeah, no, that's not going to work out. <clears throat> For when you're drawing a manga face, you want to make sure it's proportionate as possible. I'm going to put the eyes just right here. Make sure I leave a space right there in between the two. And remember when drawing, remember it doesn't have to be perfect. It, it doesn't have to be 
exactly the same on both sides. But that's what your goal is, really. You want to make your drawing nice and make sure it works. But nothing's perfect, really. There. I'm just going to bring this up a little closer so you can see my example. There. Perfect. Okay. Up next, I'll be talking about shading. Now, I'm sure... Probably most of you already know when I want to practice my shading. Okay, hold on. I'll just use a cup or circle of some sort. Circle doesn't have to be perfect. Once you have your circle, you're going to want to mark where the light source is coming from. I'll make sure it's coming from this angle right here. If you can see that. The light is hitting right here at the ball or circle. <clears throat> so you want to make sure you don't do this. If the light is hitting from right here, you're going to think that it's going to be a little bright right here, right? So don't just do... That's not what you want to do. The light is hitting... Another tip... Uh, in shading is you can rub your finger along the sides over here to just make it, the pencil blended to the paper a little bit more but it will get your finger dirty so you don't have to do that there's another trick that I can teach you at the end of the video since the light is hitting from right here I imagine that the light source will be right here where it's mostly bright. So I'm just going to shade where I know this is going to be shaded. There's a lot of different things you can do with lead when it comes to shading. Start pressing down really hard for the darker areas. And as you go more forward to the light source, you're just going to press down lighter and lighter until you're satisfied.
And in this area, you're gonna do where the ball is shaded in. Again, press it down hard where the most shaded area will be, and then get lighter and lighter. And then just And that's perfect. If you want, you can even just erase a little bit going like that. In the direction of the shape, which also really helps and just kind of blend it all in. I'm going to erase where the light source hits the most. Make it look really bright. And that's perfect for shading. That's what you don't want to do. Okay. Now, we're going to be moving on to when you're done with a picture and you're going to your coloring process. So hold on, let me skip forward in the video. I'll just draw uh, something simple. I'll outline it and erase it and then show you what not to do in your coloring process and what you should do. See you in a second. I'm not done with the drawings yet, but I was drawing this and I decided since I'm drawing a picture of Goku, I might as well show you some basic tips and basic things you want to do if you're drawing um, in an anime style. You're just going to want to draw where his shoulders are marked. And as you can see, that's not very proportioned. So I'm just going to fix that to where I'm satisfied. Then I'm going to mark with circles where the shoulders will be. Doesn't have to be perfect, and just mark lines for the arms. Got the neck. Now. This area right here is where the collarbone is and where the chest starts. Let me just mark this shoulder a little closer. Okay, there. I'll just skip forward now. Okay, now that I have these little sketches down, I'm just going to erase <clears throat> some of the lead, which is another thing you really want to do if you're using 
really cult markers, but I guess this could go for anything else because you want your picture to look nice and you don't want any lead in the background, do you? for that ink to dry. Now, this is absolutely my worst nightmare that I'm doing right now. See all these lead marks I have on this one on the don't do? Well, exactly what I said not to do a minute ago, I'm going to do. And I really hate myself for doing this. Because I'm risking one of my markers. What will I use? What do I not need? I'll use acid yellow. Well, no, I gotta use a skin color because he has skin color. I don't wanna risk any skin colors. Because you guys know I run out of skin colors really easily. I'll use EO2 fruit pink. You can just see how the lead makes it smear. It goes all just not right, and it just smudges everywhere all over your drawing. Does not look nice. I'm gonna stop doing that. Ooh, I just hate doing that. If you have, if you own Copic markers, don't do that. So I'm just going to erase everything. And when you're erasing, erase as best as possible. You don't want it to smear. Also, if you have a really uh, a pen with a lot of ink in it, and you've just made a drawing and you just inked it, wait a couple of minutes because you want the ink to dry. Because then that will smell smear. Jeez, I can't talk today. All over your paper. Now that I have that, something, okay, let me get the same marker, EO2. Something you don't want to do in a drawing, well, you can do, but I suggest not to. Here, look at what I'm doing. I'm just coloring all over, not being precise. I'm going outside of the lines. It's a real nightmare. <laughs> And then I leave it like that. See, I colored so much of the lines. I colored even here. Oh my gosh, that looks bad. Now that I have the don't do out of the way, I'm going to show you what you want to do in your inking process. I'll use a different marker for this one. I'll use E21. When, if you do have copy markers, you can just... Barely graze in the darkest areas. They're gonna. Oh, wait, did I not erase? I think I did. Remember, erase really good. You don't want to see any lead. I'm just barely grazing my paper from the darkest areas to the lightest area. It also, what you need in art, what you really need in art, is patience, because that really helps. I know some artists who take even weeks on some of their pieces, 
but it's absolutely worth it. You'll be so satisfied with what you get in the end of your picture. Now, I'm not just going to finish there. I do have one tone now, and I did mark where all my brightest areas... Oh, oops. Where all my brightest areas will be. I did. But, now that I have that, I'm going to take a darker color. This one is kind of out of ink, but I want to use it anyway. And then... Mark the darkest areas and just go like that. It always helps to have more shades of different colors and just blending it all together. You don't need Copic markers to do what I'm doing. All you need is imagination and my videos. <laughs> no, no, I'm joking. And once you mark in the darkest areas, you'll know what what light source is coming from. Remember when we talked about shading. So I'm going to stop there. Uh, I hope. Uh, this video helps you in any way possible with your art. Because that will be really nice to know that I help someone with their art. Uh, comment down below any drawings or any video requests that you want me to do. And please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know yet. Uh, yeah. Peace.